Satish Lakshmanan. Why don't you, uh, why don't you come on in, Satish? And uh, Satish is a longtime Cube alum. He's been on the on the Cube many times. Uh, flew up here this morning. Thanks very much for making the time, Dave. Great to be here. Great to see you Looking again. Looking sharp as usual. Uh, all kinds of crazy action. You know, you flew right into the storm. Uh, <laughs> Salesforce, Oracle, the Urinary Olympics. It just doesn't get any better than this, does it? It's a perfect, exciting time. We introduced a couple of new products. So uh, Yeah, we're going to talk time. about that and, uh, you know, looking forward to, uh, to the update. So Oracle Open World, uh, you know, arguably the largest tech show that's out there. Sure. Um, Oracle, of course, really the center of the data universe and has been for many, many years. And yep. uh, your business is a lot about data, of right. course. So uh, a lot of your customers are, are, are uh, or customers, customers are running Oracle. Um, but let's start with uh, what's new in your world, uh, Satish. You guys had a bunch of product announcements. Uh, let me set it up. I mean, you, we have talked a lot uh, over the last couple of years about the transitions that are underway. Um, uh, a faster fiber channel, uh, Ethernet, 10 gig E, uh, fiber channel over Ethernet. And um, you know, the users that we talk to um, are struggling. Okay, they, they're trying to figure out, all right, which way do I go? Do I have to make a choice? Will I get locked in? So the announcements that you've made this week are all about giving more flexibility and more choice. So why don't you, uh, I said this week, but this past month. Sure. All about more flexibility, more choice. Take us through what you announced, uh, what the philosophy is, and then we'll get into it. Sure. Uh, Thanks. Uh, you know, like you said, Oracle Open World is a fantastic show, really important to a lot of uh, enterprise class customers, and we wanted to align our new product announcement with Oracle Open World so we could talk more about it you know, at this venue. So what we announced last week was basically a three family of products that provide true um, flexibility for cloud-based customers, you know, multi-protocol products from the adapter side, allow host uh, to connect to fabric, from switch side that allows you know, native fiber channel support or converged support, and even from the router side that allows you to convert from one protocol to the other. So the entire portfolio of QLogic product from an infrastructure perspective that allows customers to embrace and choose at their own pace any technology that meets their data center requirements, whether they're traditional you know, lands and discrete enterprise class customers or they're cloud providers who want to provide infrastructure or platform as a service. So, from a customer standpoint, what does a customer have to do to take advantage of that capability? Is it really as simple as sort of saying, I just want to run whatever I want to run and the system detects it? Do I have to, do, are there any prerequisites, prerequisites that are required to set that up? How difficult is it for a customer to take advantage of that? So it's, it's really easy. So what we're offering is, is a choice in one of two ways. Uh, you know, our go-to-market model, as you're well aware, is very OEM based. So if, if an end user wants a particular configuration from the OEM, they just tell the OEM what configuration they want. And when they get a server or something, it gets pre-configured in whatever personality that they choose if that's how they want to deploy it. The other operational model is when an actual end customer, an end user, who maybe initially wants to deploy a fiber channel, can deploy a fiber channel, and through migrating the firmware load, can change that personality to CNA if they want to reconfigure the, the rack you know, with, with the servers. So that's, that's another way to do it. So Satish, when I heard this announcement, first of all, it's great that, that the industry is stepping up, and I think listening to customers uh, who have said, well, I'm nervous about going to all Ethernet, or all you know, FCOE, and, and, um, and I want choice, so you know, that's good that you guys are listening, sure. I think it's fabulous. Um, having said that, what does it mean for, in your opinion, FCOE? Because um, I can see a lot of customers saying, oh great, oh thank goodness, I can now stay with Fiber Channel a little bit longer. Is that a correct interpretation? Um, are you seeing that in the marketplace, and what are your expectations for FCOE adoption? Sure. Great question, Dave. I, we're seeing some of that. You know, if you look at what analysts had predicted um, a couple of years ago as to what FCO adoption would look like, it's fell well short of the expectations, right? Mm -hmm. So FCO adoption is slower, and our view is we, we really don't want to force any one technology or protocol onto the end customer. We want to give them full choice. So truly protocol agnosticity is kind of our strategy. And what we are saying is, you know, if you want to continue a native fiber channel path, continue down that path. If you truly want to adopt convergence and reap the benefits of it at the edge from a total cost of ownership and performance perspective, do so. You don't care? We don't care. Yeah, okay, good. Um, so I want to talk about um, this notion of end-to-end. -end. Uh, it's something that comes up uh, a lot, especially when you talk to customers, right? Uh, especially with virtualization. Uh, virtualization changes everything. It sure. becomes this big black box. I don't, I don't know what's going on in the middle. Right. Um, and so customers are increasingly saying, all right, can you give me a management stack that can give me end-to-end -end visibility that allows me to do performance management and tuning and 
you know, other things that I want to do. Is that something that you're hearing, and what role, if any, can QLogic play to facilitate that? Yeah, so great question, we're absolutely hearing that. If you look at Oracle, since we're you know, at Oracle Open World, their the database solution, the optimized database solution that they provide, truly vertically integrated database solution, is powered by QLogic technology. Now, um, we have certainly seen customers who want to go to companies like Oracle, truly vertically integrated, and saying, give me an optimized solution. If they want to embrace uh, virtualization, as you talked about, they really want it from end to end. They, what they don't want is a piecemeal solution where only at the I.O. side there's some virtualization and there's no way to stitch it together when it comes to the fabric and actually be able to virtualize storage and be able to migrate those, those applications, right, in order to maintain business continuity and resiliency. So, definite requirement from customers. What we do, our strategy is to make it easier. So, we want to integrate our solution along with the VM providers, you know, whether that's Oracle VM, Oracle Enterprise Linux, we want to make it easy to manage it from the fabric side, so our switch management solutions get integrated along with the open APIs that we provide. And uh, we basically want you know, whoever is a truly vertically integrated company like Oracle to integrate our products and technology so that they can provide exactly what the customers want, which is the entire stack optimized for the application. That so that, that would be Oracle uh, uh, writing to your APIs. To, a, to enable that end-to-end -end visibility. Correct. Um, so and we just expose the API and make it easy for them to integrate our, our driver stack, software stack. Okay, so you you uh, release a, an SDK and correct, and and the uh, developers go at it. Right. Um, I want to uh, follow up on that because you guys you're very obviously very strong at the adapter level and CNAs. You've got you know the the edge switches, right. uh, if you will. The core is not your sweet spot. Right. Um, and so and you you know you've got. I guess if you look at you know where you're going with the power of the edge switches, you can you can start to see them getting more core-like in terms of you know capabilities. But that's not your install base. Correct. So you could provide that end-to-end -end visibility through those API, working with wh who's ever core switches. Yep. Right. That's it, that's exactly and, and right. Then, and then your management stack or somebody else's management stack? Is it a manager of manager type of thing? Explain how that it's, works. It's, it's typically the OEM's management stack. So what yeah. we provide is you know, our APIs that basically allow their management utilities that to talk to our driver and firmware, right? And similarly, we, you know, we provide our own management utility, but it's, it's a very point-based solution. It only allows an end customer to manage our adapter. Conversely, if you look at a virtualized solution, right, we open up APIs to you know, VMware, or Oracle, or whoever, right, and through their management utilities, people can manage the virtualized environments on host or storage. So it's really, we're giving, again, going back to the previous strategy I talked about, it's about choice. We're not forcing them to use the utilities that we want to expose, and whatever an end customer chooses, they want to use a VMM, a virtual machine manager management utility, if they want to use an OEM management utility, if they want to use third party management utilities, they want to do it from the fabric, we just want to expose you know, our products to it. Okay, well we're here at Open World, so let's talk a little bit about Oracle. What, you, know, you and I have talked about virtualization, the impacts of virtualization. You know, we were at VMware a month ago, VMworld yeah. a month ago, and, and obviously tremendous uptake there. What's different about Oracle? So, w one of the biggest values that we see, it's truly vertically integrated, right? If you look at some of Oracle's competitors, you know, they, they don't have all the way application down to the hardware nailed down. Mm -hmm. So, if you look at all of the IP that they own from the Spark processors all the way up to the actual database type application that they can provide a complete solution. Where we fit into that is our driver stack is key to providing that integrated solution. So if they want to run, you know, I've talked about earlier about some of our I.O. product capability where we provide true application performance for key block sizes like Oracle Exchange, you know, Oracle uh, uh, old TPO LAP type of applications. So what Oracle has done has taken their database applications, optimized it to run on QLogic I.O., right, tuned it in such a way that a customer truly sees the application benefits compared to any of the previous generation products. So okay. that's how we fit in. We're integrated into it, app, down to the application level, which is optimized to run on a hardware. So that vertically integrated, all Oracle, all the time stack actually makes your life a lot easier. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Uh, and I guess you're, you're, I'm inferring from your statement, it makes customers' lives a lot easier. It makes the customer lives a lot easier. They can consolidate operations on a single piece of hardware. They can go to Oracle for support. Um, and they, they cover everything from hardware to software. That, QLogic provides. But isn't that the mother of all lock-ins? It's, it's, it's <laughs> unbelievable, and that's why if you hear the earnings announcement from Larry Ellison, yeah, he talks yeah, about yeah. the high margins, right? Indeed. Um, you know, that's an interesting topic, right? Because there's clearly value in that vertically integrated yeah. stack, and you're seeing the entire industry is going that way, whether it's Oracle, which is 
the furthest end of the spectrum, the all red, uh, to take something like you know what EMC is doing with uh, VMware and Cisco and having a virtual integration strategy. But yeah. you know, pretty much the the entire world is doing it. Even yeah. pure play companies like NetApp are doing it with yeah. Cisco and, and, yeah. and VMware. Um, and I, you can't answer this question, I, 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 but I, I've been thinking about it a lot. What is the value of that? Um, you know, and how do customers go through that decision process in terms of, okay, I know I'm going to get locked in, but there's, but I know there's value there. Yeah. You know, there's got to be a, a, a business case around it. I'm sure many customers um, make that business case. But have you ever ha had that discussion with with customers, or even uh, your uh, OEMs? As to, we've had as some to discussions. It, I think I think it just comes down to what gives what solution, whether it's vertically integrated, whether it's locked in, or whatever, gives them the peace of mind. And I think that's that's the bottom line. That's where it comes down to. Yeah. So it's kind of. Um, I guess it's, I think of it, I mean, I'm sure there may be more parameters, but there's certainly cost, and there's certainly risk, which is the peace of mind piece, and then there's business value. Absolutely. Depend, I guess it's depending, it's always, it's always about the application. I guess it's depending upon the application. Yep. Um, if you've got a high value application, that's super high risk, yeah. um, cost is going to be less important. Yeah. And you're willing to pay that premium. You know, you don't mind as much. You, 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 you mind getting locked in after you're locked in, um, and you're and you're paying that price, yeah. But it's driving, you know, hundreds of millions or billions of dollars of yeah. revenue. Yeah. You know, you're not going to worry about it. So it really is that trade off, that spectrum. And uh, and and if, and if you continue on that thought, you know, some of the differentiated features that Oracle provides. So you know, there's a lot of talk at Oracle Open World about, you know, T10 diff kind of data integrity, data protection kind of technologies, right. which we're closely working with. So if you think of what the value they bring, other than just pure vertical integration, application optimized, they're also br bringing them additional functionality that provides business con continuity, disaster recovery type of solutions that they can get from one, one place, one stop shop. Yeah, so, I mean, while we're on the topic, I mean, the whole consolidation of the industry, you've been in the industry a, a, a while, you've, you're savvy, you've, you've watched the trends. I mean, you remember when it was a business model advantage to be you know, purely focused on your own little area. Absolutely. And of course, QLogic became you know, a great company doing that. It's come full circle, yeah, kind and, of. And now <laughs> you're getting into other areas, and you see, look at EMC is a classic example of a yeah. pure play storage company that, you know, I mean, I guess they're a storage company. Yeah. I guess, yeah. you know, but there's virtualization, there's documentum, there's security, you know, who knows. Um, what do you think that means uh, for QLogic um, and, and what does it mean for the industry, that, that consolidation trend? So, so one thing is I think it's nothing but good for QLogic, right? That's the growth opportunity. If you think about historically what we were, we were a fiber channel company, and our growth was tied to how much fiber channel uptake happens at the back end of the data center. Now with, with convergence happening, with transition happening on the storage side, on the server side, opens up tremendous opportunity for us. We now have the ability to sell products, not just into those niche back-end server type of applications, we can sell it to storage vendors, we can sell it to servo vendors, we can integrate with fabric vendors, we can provide true end-to-end -end integrated solutions, provide software value and differentiation to the end customer through our OEM partners. So, it's an opportunity for us to grow beyond that traditional company that we were. Yeah, and Oracle's got an incredibly powerful model there. I mean, there's a lot of vertical integration going on, but Oracle, as I said, takes it to the limit because of the applications and the database. Right. And, um, and that's a very impressive, and that's what's driving a lot of Oracle's profits. Um, I wanted to talk about Romley. Okay. Um, Romley's coming. Uh, share with our audience, what is Romley? Why is it important? What does it mean for, for QLogic and the networking and storage business? Sure, sure, great question. So it's next generation Intel CPU architecture. It, it adds PCI Gen 3 capabilities to, to servers. So really powerful set of CPUs, uh, shipping probably around Q1 from most tier one server OEMs in Q1 of calendar year 12. Uh, aligns very well with the introduction of next generation technology. So 16 gig fiber channel, for example, for backend database type of applications. Uh, br broad based adoption of 10 gigabit ethernet, whether it's a LOM, uh, whether it's a daughter card, um, you know, that allows pure two ports of network connectivity or converged connectivity from, from two free ports that you get on a server. So all of these technology transitions, convergence happening in Rack and Tower and Blade, adoption of next generation 16 gig fiber channel technology, all of it is tied to more powerful CPUs. So it's a great opportunity for us to sell more QLogic products. So how will that drive uh, 10 gig uh, adoption? Because you're seeing 10 gig largely at the core today, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. uh, how will Romley affect that, in your opinion? So, so with CPU becoming much more powerful, with virtualization getting adopted more and more, 
So people running more applications on one physical server, because iOS starts to become a, bad, a bandwidth limitation, right? So the, with reason it drives one gig to 10 gig transition, if you go back and you look at Westmere or even the Nihalem based platforms, all the basic connectivity coming out of the server is one, one gig with Ethernet. So that's being forced to migrate to 10 gig now because you know we were talking to VMware recently and they were saying if you just run vMotion traffic, you can very quickly saturate a 10 gig pipe. Right? So, and so everybody's running vMotion traffic. And everyone's traffic. running vMotion yeah. if you virtualize your host. So, so what it really means is it drives 10 gig, it drives requirement for next generation even fiber channel technologies, which means we can sell more products. So it's more of a growth story for us kind of commensurate with the with the uptake of Romley based platforms. Data growth, um, networking, you know, storage, you guys are in the, the center of it all. Uh, Satish, thanks very much for flying up today and spending some time on theCUBE. Um, enjoy the rest of uh, Open World and it's great to see you, my friend. Thanks, just, thanks for the opportunity, good to see you again. Yeah, I appreciate